All right, we are bringing this meeting to order, please. And uh, we will start with a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. And uh, I would like to ask for a moment of silence while Mr. Sira, who is our official prayerologist, is going to uh, uh, better our souls. Okay, if I could. Well, let's just think for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Father God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to be at Foxtown, Lord. This is a, a property which has grown and it looks so nice. And Lord, you have blessed this property. You have blessed this board. You have blessed this county with so much. And we just thank you for being in our presence. And may our thoughts today be your thoughts and carry these out throughout the month, throughout the year, so that we can continue to serve the residents of Queen Anne County. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Now, the first item we're going to uh, address is any early public comment? Is anyone? Yeah, I'd like to make Sir, your name, your. First of all, my name is Mickey Perron. Yeah. Is it Mikey? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my name is Mickey Perroni from Foxtown. and I live up here in the apartments. On behalf of the members of the Foxtown community, we want to welcome you all up here. Thank you for coming to have your meeting here in front of us. Um, brings me to my first point that I want to bring up. Uh, when you were Zooming, we were able to address public comments. We're not allowed to do that now. I'm asking if there's some kind of way that you can get a phone connection so the people that are viewing can make a public comment. Is that possible? I mean, I'm, I'm sitting there watching, and I say, I can't, I want to see. That's possible? I, I can't answer officially. Well, you'll look into we'll, we'll it. We'll do our best. All right, that's good, that's good. Um, another other one that's been a pet peeve of mine has been vacant apartments up here. Um, it seems like in the past there's been a big secret of how many people's on the, on the waiting list. But now I've heard two, two years. We've got three vacant apartments. We've got one that's been vacant four months, another one's been vacant uh, a couple, two or three months. It's totally unacceptable when you got a waiting list. Katia said at one of her meetings she could turn a apartment over in 14 days. Am I right, Richard? You heard, you heard that. I've never seen anything turned over one apartment in 14 days. I got a commercial construction background. I know it can be done. This is totally unacceptable. It should be, I got a suggestion for you all. In your, uh, in your what's your, uh, you're gonna say how many vacancies there is. What you should add to it is Foxtown, we got two vacancies. But we have apartment 214 and 307. Next month, those numbers should not be on the, me the me meetings. Does that make sense? Sounds like it. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean that's been my pet peeve, vacant apartments. And, and I would really like to see you all fix that. Uh, I hate to bring back, the only time it's been, um, been all um, vacant was when Lisa was here. But uh, hey, you know. It looks like we got a good crew going, working for us now. We really appreciate it. Uh, and also, we like to, uh, you know, just go on record and appreciate everything you've done for us up here. Uh, we, <laughs> we've been trying four years to get furniture, and we got it. So, just one item in there. Yeah. I got <laughs> one other. One other is, I've asked before, and if there's any way possible that we can get copies of the minutes, 
before it seemed, I brought it up, it seemed like it's a big secret. They didn't want anybody to know it. But I would like to be able to follow through, you know, and make sure that everything Mickey Prony's saying today is on your minutes. I mean, that's just an example, okay? But I mean, can we get the minutes? Where is that? We're on the website. Then we will be on the website. So, okay. Yeah. Huh? That's all I got. Yeah. My goodness, well, thank you for that offering, sir. <laughs> is there anyone else? Ms. Sell, have you something to contribute? Are we really yeah. mic'd? Because there's no mic. There's a mic. It's that thing. Okay. All right. Well, I'm Diana Sell. I'm from Terrapin Grove now. I was up here for a year. Um, Linda is very sick, so I'm kind of trying to take the place. Um, I just signed my agreement thing, and I went over a couple things with Kendra. Where did she go? Hi, in the back. Okay. So there was just a few little things in the um, lease thing that I didn't know about. And so it's, it, I like the new paperwork. It explains everything. And, you know, now the people will change their, we won't have all these questions because they're all answered in this paper, um, our rental agreement. So I really appreciate that. Answered a lot of my questions. Um, my sort of pet peeve, Mickey, since you're going to go there, um, and I talked to Rick about it. Um, when someone's spouse passes away, the policy is that they have to move to another apartment, um, like close to immediately. But anyway, it's very, I think, painful and inhumane that if you could just revisit that whole situation and maybe give it more time, six months, a year, that they have to be in the new apartment. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking, can I name names? No. Don't go, okay, you understand. Okay, okay. But I just, you know, I'm always saying thank you, but I still am thankful for what's been done. You know, there's lots of things happening, and so people are getting happier. They're not, you know, so whiny and complaining, you know, so. I, I appreciate that, and I like where you're moving forward, and we we'll just try to keep that going. And communication's good, although I call on everybody too much. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who has something to contribute? Mr. Bill, Mr. Billy, have you? You have anything to say? No, no, no. All right, he's good. Well, with that, I'm going to close public comment and proceed to the next thing, which is our executive detractor. Sorry, the minutes we have to approve. Uh, oh, I need to get a vote on the minutes. Uh, somebody would propose that to approve them, and then we'll the minutes. A motion. For the minutes. Motion. Yeah, yeah. J no, just oh, make a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. There you go. All right. Um, so on the executive director's report, I wanted to jump ahead and with the with Mr. Chair's approval, um, we're going we've got a couple of really pretty special guests that I'm going to uh, invite to come up here in a second, but we want to just, I want to thank the Foxtown community for having us today. I want to thank you all for what you do. I also want to thank you personally for when I come, the way you treat me. Um, you're just, you always act happy to see folks up here and, and you're all, you know, you, you, you got your issues, your concerns, which we're working to address, but at the same point, you just, you treat us all so great. I appreciate it. I appreciate your patience as we've gone through here and, and letting us take a tour to see all these renovations because it's been wonderful. Um, what the reason we're having the meeting up here specifically is to brag a little bit um, because there has been a lot done here recently 
And um, part of that's been done. We'll have we'll have Mr. David Sadiq and Mr. Seth Cousins come up in a second. But it was it's we've gotten a lot of renovations done, and that was initially funded through a community development block grant, which the county got for the housing authority back even before the transition occurred. There was this block grant that happened. It was awarded in September of 2022 for $450,000, and it was mostly just for a replacement of the roof, uh, only of the senior center, actually. And then in 2023, we were able to get another $200,000 to include the roof on the senior, on the Foxtown apartments. Um, so that was a total grant of $650,000. With the help of the folks from the county, which they might talk about, RRH Associates was awarded the contract for both roofs, and it only came in at $241,540. So we had a significant amount of money on our side, and the folks of the state that award the Community Development Block Grant work with us to find acceptable ways to spend the difference, which is why the hallways are painted now. You have new handrails, new carpeting, um, and also the building outside got power washed and some other, other interesting stuff. So um, that was... That's just another example of how the county and the housing authority are kind of coming together to work to make it possible. And then, speaking of the county, I'll invite you guys up, David and, and uh, Seth, if you guys don't mind coming up to talk about the work you've done to make all these amazing renovations possible. All right. Probably going to need a mic here. So. Share with you. <coughs> and. I'm honored to be actually able to, to share my expertise and Seth's expertise. Is that on or off? I'm just going to have to speak up. They can hear you on TV, but we just need just to stop speaking. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a mic for recording. So not for, not for oh, application, okay. so well, you got to speak up. Okay. <laughs> i got to shout. Well, I'm not good at that. Um, I'm quite a guy. Um, but anyway, it was my honor to actually be involved in this renovation for the the apartments and the senior center and the community of Suttersville. Uh, we've got this, what made it really happen, actually three things, having the senior center and the staff here and the apartments, residents, working together with us and the good contractor that we had. And having Seth being kind of able to manage the grant and he was very kind of thorough and he made it happen just painlessly and very, very, thank you Seth. So we replaced the roofs, we replaced, we painted all this area, replaced all the ceiling tiles that needed to replace, we power washed the outside, and we looked at issues like health and safety. We had a lot of mold and, and mildew on the outside, so we came up with the idea of power washing, so it looks nice and clean and sharp. We replaced all the carpeting on the three floors for the apartments uh, to make it all nice and, and clean. The carpet there was since 2007, I believe. So it's pretty old, and uh, it's we picked up the color and to match everything. We uh, painted all the hallways, all the common areas actually was painted, and replaced all the handrail, which actually made it more of ADA accessible than the old handrail we had before. So all of it came together, and, and finally everybody here is actually happy. We had we had nothing but good comments from everybody here. And the stairwells. And the stairwells, the exit stairwells for fire escapes. So we got the farm marshal involved in that. And we did it up to code. And uh, we are proud of it. With and coordination with housing department, with Department of Public Works, we were uh, very keen, <clears throat> very keen on communicating with housing department, with the residents here to have the least amount of negative effect on them while the work went on both uh, for the roofing part as well as the interior uh, renovations. And uh, we were able, as David um, alluded to, uh, to do very, very um, well with that and were successful in our opinion. Um, the residents were wonderful to work with, allowing our contractors to uh, repaint their doors of their actual apartment doors, as well as the hallways, doing spackling taking out the carpet, which we tried to do one half at a time so that there was still egress so that people could come in and out safely. And so again, that was a focus of the project the entire time to be safe and clean. And I have been on many projects in my tenure 
and especially roofing projects. And in this one in particular, uh, I only found two nails on the outside. Now, please don't, don't, <laughs> don't go outside and find five more. But the contractor was very, very detailed in their cleaning every day. And I was very pleased and proud to be working with them along the housing department to ensure that, again, it was safely done and uh, nicely done and that we got this result. So it was a pleasure and honor to work on the project. Well, thank you so much. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Great to work with. They, they kept us honest and kept us working and uh, made sure that you know, we always knew ahead of time what was going to happen. Even when I didn't know what I was doing, they made sure we did. So, well, one, one thing I must say about any project, communication, communication, communication. That's what made it really good, putting everything with the residents and the senior center. So we were part of that. And thank you again. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I would just like to add that their workers were wonderful. They were very courteous with all of the tenants here. Um, they looked out for us. We opened our door and everybody jumped to make sure we could get down the hall safely and everything. And then we reciprocated by giving them lots of ice water. <laughs> and we treated them to pizza. You know? So, I mean, it was, it was really a, a very pleasant experience for everyone and they did an excellent job, and the workers were superior. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, in a project like this, how many uh, internal county employees are working um, in addition to the contract? From, from, just, the, just from public works, we only had three people. That's it. It was myself, Seth, and an inspector. an inspector who actually not here today. But, a good job. Like that, very and, uh, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Proceed. All right. So, um, just a couple other things to add to the vacancy report or to the uh, director's report. Um, you mentioned the vacancies. That is something we are focusing heavily on. That's something we've been focusing on. We, first thing we were working on real quick was to try to respond to work orders a little more, a little more quickly, be able to provide resources worth of work orders. Now we're working on those vacancies. Um, I know that uh, Lisa Gray is going to, we're going to introduce her towards the end, but she's focused laser-like to get the departments turned over faster. Um, the board here has got a list of statistics that they're going to see just exactly what you're seeing. Are we going to, um, are we going, how, what, what's our uh, lease up rate? How many of our apartments are ready for occupancy? What's going to go on there? And we're tracking that. We also, our staff has started a team meeting where we meet every morning, Tuesday mornings, between 8 and 9 for a quick, just less than an hour, but that's where we're going to start talking about those. These are the units that are open. What's happening? And I'm watching, I'm watching the folks at the Housing Authority staff um, between Ken who's in the back and Brian and Lisa right here and some other staff. They're, they're talking about the best way to turn these apartments over and make them happen quicker. So that's happened. Um, as you all know, board, you guys have the different um, types of uh, data. So we're going to start having a data sheet, which, we're, which I call a dashboard. Um, so you can kind of see um, anything from our housing choice voucher list there to how many vacancies we have, which currently we're at total at a 94% occupancy rate at the moment. Um, we're, at, we're actually at 97 in Graysonville. Um, so in 87 is at Fisher Manor. We have three vacancies there, what we're dealing with right at the second, at the moment. Um, another new statistic we added, and we'll talk more about this next month, is at the bottom right of this dashboard, is the, the number of people on the wait list at each of the different areas. Because we got multiple wait lists and the rules about wait lists, and you can see the data from the wait list there and how many we have on each list for that. And We'll have a presentation about the wait list at next month's meeting because I know there's been questions about how does that work and you all get a lot of questions about it so I thought we'd let you know how we do it. Um, just a couple things on board membership. Uh, Commissioner Arndt is getting ready to be renewed and I believe that the commissioners are going to consider that at tomorrow's meeting. Thank you for agreeing to be back on. I know that there's a little bit of, little bit of extra work there but thank you for your patience on that. Um, again, I'd like to welcome the new staff, and we'll hear a little bit more from them at the end. Brian Barnshaw, who's our facilities, facilities manager, and Lisa Gray, who is our property manager. 
Um, they've both been great and hit the ground running. And we actually have an interview um, for our, our final facilities tech position on Thursday. We'll be interviewing that day. Um, I told you about the weekly team meetings. Uh, Lisa, we've been meeting with tenant councils. Uh, we've been meeting with Terrapin Grove last week. And um, we had a, a meeting with the tenant council just today. That was wonderful. We got to hear that and got to meet some folks um, there and, and hear concerns and also some strengths. And we'll work to make that happen. Um, hopefully I have it. Uh, Fisher Manor. If you can mark your calendars, if you feel like it, on, on July 18th, which is a week from this Thursday, there's going to be a little picnic out there at Fisher Manor just to kind of meet and greet the residents out there and if, if they want to meet you. So that will be going on from 5 to 8 next Thursday night. Um, and let's see. Um, oh, administrative office move. Uh, the computer folks have been working very hard. We've got one major software package moved over to the county. We got one more, the Scott Accounting Computer Systems. Once we get that moved over, um, we'll be able to, that's when our staff will really be able to move over into the new apartments at Kramer Center and we'll be able to talk about what we want to do with that, the part, with that building. Um, we've had some information come in about the admin office on Water Street and I think what's going to happen is I'm going to ask you all to have an executive committee meeting for that next month before the meeting also. So we'll, maybe you'll have to come in maybe at 3.30 or something like that next month for an executive to, talk, to start having some conversations. Um, another thing I've been working on, which is kind of, I've been able to sit with, with Brian and Lisa here, I've actually been able to sit down and kind of get myself a little organized at the desk, which they have not been able to do, but I've been able to do it uh, a little bit. And I've uh, started to look into our insurance to see what, where we can save money with insurance, where the county can cover stuff, where we can cover it. So I'm going to talk with the county, I've talked with the folks at the Housing Authority Insurance Group, HAI group. And my next step is to set up a meeting with uh, Dwayne Ember in the HR office of the county and, and figure out what works best. And I think other than that, unless there's other questions, I've covered everything I wanted to make you aware of for the director's report. <clears throat> so we will now proceed on to old business, starting with the rental increase, Mr. Clark. So the rental increase with just group approved and people have been overwhelmingly positive for rental increase thanks to your all hard work is starting that August 1st and everything's been sent out all of our tenants have received paperwork on that and that new increase will take effect the first of next month. And then I also mentioned uh, the sale of housing administration offices we've we've got um, we've got some uh, not quotes but uh, uh, what's it I'm blanking on the word. Appraisal. Appraisal, thank you very much. Appraisal done. It's been done so we can talk about in executive session the results of that at the next board meeting. So, so did we mention, you, you mentioned the, um, the wait list. Yes. Now, those figures are going to be available next, next are they on? They're going to be brought up next meeting, but you can also see in the lower right-hand corner here, oh. I've got a list of how many are on each waiting okay. list. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's a sheet that looks like this down at the bottom. It says uh, wait list for June, the bottom right hand corner. You can kind of see how many people are on each wait list. For, we, we've got a wait list for every, <coughs> every development and then there's a wait list for each number of bedrooms at each development. And they're all separate wait lists. Do so, <coughs> you have separate wait lists for existing in-county residents versus out-of-county residents? <clears throat> we'll talk more about that because that, that is the issue that comes up at every, we're going to talk more in depth at that at the next meeting, but basically it's the same wait list. It's just the folks in the county have priority and they stay in front of the folks that are outside of the county. The question that becomes and the question we're talking about internally is what happens, what happens when a person who got on the wait list was out of the county and then they became a county resident they jump way up when that happens. And as a board and as a staff, I think we're going to have to make some recommendations to this board if we want to consider changing the way that happens so, in the future. Literally speaking, uh, someone from out of county is not likely to ever get selected if there's anybody, even someone who just came in 
yesterday as a county resident. That is correct. You're always going to get priority. That is correct. Unless they've already been, I mean, there's a, li there's a little bit. Like if, yeah. I, if you were out of county and you were the only person on the wait list and I started the process with you and having you fill out the lease and then somebody from in county did, they would be behind. But in most cases, very rarely, unless the waiting list is really, really short. And mm -hmm. in some cases, there are some specifics where it is short that an out of county person will make yeah, it, I know but there's certain, it's, it's very you, rare. You look at individual <clears throat> situations uh, to take that into consideration because I know there's, I've heard of situations like, uh, you know, go and live with your daughter or your son in law temporarily, and that's out of county, but in, really, in reality, you're an in county person. And that does, that does happen. And right now, according to our policies and procedures we, we, that we follow, that would be okay. That would bump them up on the list. That, yes. uh, that would, okay. Yes. Okay. So then that's something we might want to look at to see what we're allowed to do and also it's what we want to continue to do with the wait list. And um, <clears throat> does it make a difference as to what federal contribution ends up being? where they're currently <clears throat> resident. We're getting a little out of my depth, but I don't think it, I think we have to follow rules for a HUD list. And one of the keys, we have to have rules and we have to follow them. So I don't think those rules necessarily change based on the amount of contribution or the percentage of contribution you get from any particular government. I don't okay. think that changes them. Again, I would have to double check that, but I don't think so. Thank you. Thank you. Let's. On the subject of rules, sir, yeah. it would appear that the, this organization has rules that were put in place at some distant point in time. <coughs> I don't know what to do about that. I have no microphone. <laughs> you want? Okay, All right. <clears throat> I was saying. Um, it would seem that this organization has some set of rules as you would do speaking of the rule about I don't I've never been given a copy of those rules and it would be I think if we do have a set of rules like that we ought to annually go over them yes. and see what ones make sense and what don't and let's get on with that too so that that'll be on our agenda ma'am there it. you go there's actually two plans and we can, that's uh, a great idea. And that might be something I was thinking, uh, like in the fall that we could kind of focus sure. on and work on it. Yeah. There, we'll get there's, it. there's like two books of this big, but we can kind of go over it. You, you've opened Pandora's box, <laughs> my dear. Yeah, we'll get on that. Go ahead. Um, I think, other than that, I think we're into new business now. We've covered the Sellersville uh, improvements, but we're gonna, the. The, hopefully you guys will stay around to take a little tour after the board meeting. Yeah. Um, so we'll do that. And then we've talked about membership, but um, at this moment, if it's all right with you, can we introduce, uh, I'll start with Brian Barnshaw, our facilities manager. He has, man, talk about hit the ground running. Not only has he physically been hitting the ground running, he's been spending a lot of hours, and he also puts a lot of heart into what he does, which I think... Uh, Steve, uh, you already warned us that that was going to happen, but uh, I would like to just thank him and, and welcome. And what would you like to share, Brian? What's thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, it's all kind of new for me. A lot of familiar faces. Um, yes, we do. We got a lot of stuff going on. We just had, we got brickwork being done out here today. We finally got the Terrapin Grove um, sinkhole fixed. That's been going on for quite a while. <laughs> we got some parking lots being fixed. We're trying to work on faster turnovers, so that's kind of tough. We're a little shorthanded now, but we're also working on that, and hopefully hopefully we, we hire the right guy. Um, other than that, all, all is going pretty well, and um, I've got great people around me. And one main thing I wanted to say is that nobody talks about them, but Kenya, Hassani, um, Terry, also Mike, and obviously Lisa, you know, they're kind of behind the scenes and Chenard is tremendous help to me so you hear very very little about these people so they're, they're a lot of help um, if you would give us a, one paragraph report on what is going on at Fisher Manor since that seems to have been the concentration of your efforts for okay so right now we're working on all new decks all new de front porches the decks the deck that surrounds 
the um, laundry room and the office. We're getting the parking lot patched. I think that will be next week. Um, we talked about the, play, the playground. We're having the playground redone. I think that's going to be sooner than later also. So there's, there's a lot going on at, at Fisher right now. Thank you. With the highest compliments from everybody in your direction, sir. Thank you, Thank you much. Lisa. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you, Brian. And then the next person who is not at all happy, she's been very happy to work with, but she is not at happy at all happy about this public speaking thing, only been here for two months or two weeks, but she said that she would introduce herself and just kind of say who she is and say hi. New property manager, um, very new, two weeks. Really, I've just been working on getting to know everyone. Um, the policy and procedures that's been in place, how we can improve a lot of things at the properties. Um, I'm trying to learn the properties, work on getting to know the tenants. I haven't had much of a chance to do so in two weeks, um, but I am excited to get out and start working in the offices more often and figuring out what they need. I find that communication has been kind of a um, thing that we, we definitely need to work on with them. They want to be heard. I definitely can see that, so hopefully we can um, work on getting that, um, you know, in a more positive direction and having them, you know, being heard. I'm also working with Brian on how we can do a lot of improvements on maintenance, get into having like preventative maintenance inspections. I think that's like another big thing that we have not been having. Um, and that's where, you know, you're going in there, I, I would say at least twice a year, if not more, um, just going in there, checking the fire, uh, smoke detectors, the um, filters, changing the filters, I think all of that. And then we kind of see what we're working with in each apartment, because I think some of the apartments, you know, could definitely use some improvements for sure. But, mm -hmm. Lisa, what is your contact information, phone number? You know? I might, no, she's not well, that. I don't want to give you my it. personal, I mean, I could give you my personal cell phone, but I don't have that. I just recently just got my phone, um, but I can definitely get that. Um, and then yeah, at the you, office yeah. would be. So you can reach her at the office, and then um, you don't know the number to your new cell phone yet, right? I, I have it right gotcha. over here. Okay. I mean, they just gave it to me, so, I mean, that's been a whole. <laughs> I had to wait for that as well, so. Would you come with the highest uh, previews of anyone I've seen around? If you can live up to your own reputation, you'll do great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I hope so. I, I, I plan to do my best. I'm definitely going to try and work hard. You're doing you know, I, I, I care a lot, and you know, I have a lot of passion. So, you know, I'm gonna bring what I've learned so far from everybody. Everybody's been so welcoming and great. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't even say enough about that. Yeah. Everybody has been great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I just, I, I just want to say there's a certain energy in this room now an energy that uh, we have not had. And uh, everyone's smiling. It seems like everyone does enjoy what they're doing and why they're doing it. So I, I hats off to each and every one of you because together, uh, you know, we can rock. You know, we can get everything that we need, everything that we want because of what uh, Steve has done and what you've done as well, Mike. It's just, I'm just delighted to be a part of it. And it's no angst. We've eliminated angst from everything that's going on. I thank the residents and everybody here, so thank you much. Well played, Rick. Well played. Thank you. Uh, that gets us to what? Announcements. Announcement. Do you have an announcement? The only announcement I have is just to remind everybody about um, the, the uh, Foxtown, not the Foxtown, we're at Foxtown. We're going to take the tour after this, so please hang out here for the Foxtown. We're going to look around, look at the new furniture, go look at the new rugs, new painting, um, and then we'll go look into an apartment that we're about to turn over. And then also next Thursday, the uh, meet and greet at Fisher Manor. And with that, uh, I'm going to ask for a uh, motion to adjourn. So be it. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. And most welcome to you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.